Um, and you know, the jazz could try to retain him. But at the end of the day, like if you're a basketball player of Jordan Clarkson's caliber and you signed a team friendly deal because you were competing for a title and that title window closed, would you stay? Me, if I'm him, I wouldn't. And well, it's not personal. Doc, something to consider too is that Danny Ainge is he's really mentioned, you know, at the start of the year that he's hoping with this rebuild by year three that we would be a contender or making the playoffs, you know, progressing. So there is a chance that the Utah Jazz might be all in. And uh, you know, something to consider as well with our cap space is Lowry Markinen. And uh he's on some interesting uh he's on an interesting deal right now. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, Doc? Yeah, so Lowry Markinen, um his his last guaranteed year is actually going to be next year, where he's going to make 17 million and then his 2024 into 2025 is only guaranteed up to six million. I think it would be a very, very um, good gesture from the Utah Jazz to fully guarantee that last year as soon as possible. Now, the deadline for that is going to be June 1st of 2024. So that'll be next year's draft. Um, but I would just, I would guarantee it. Absolutely. You know, like, look what he has done this year for us. You know, like, unless you were watching FIBA, which we both were, you know, how would you have projected that he was going to be this kind of player? Which we did, by the way. <laughs> um, you know, like, he he was, uh, what is it, most improved player of the year, mm -hmm. which he absolutely deserved because he went from 14 points to 25. He had an incredibly efficient stat line. He was one of the most efficient players in the NBA. In fact, there was one point where he was the most efficient player in the NBA, averaging 20 or more points off of 50, 40, and 90. And he was alongside Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. which is and incredible. Donovan Mitchell. And then there was a point where he overtook all of them in terms of efficiency. So I would absolutely guarantee that last year, and then I would, however the, the CBA works, I would offer this man excuse me the the max the max i could mm -hmm. for the next five years because so, i think that he's a foundational piece i think that um you know when you look at his fiba stat line he put up 28 points nine nine boards off the same kind of efficiency you know and then the last 50 games the last 50 games of this last season he averaged 28 and 9 you know, mm -hmm. over the entire season, yeah, he averaged 25. You know, he started at 22, but it continued to rise. And when you can average 28 over 50 games, I'm sorry, like, there's no way he doesn't come out next year and do the same thing. He's going to get 28 and 10, and uh, I think that's just going to be who the new Lowry Markinen is. Yeah, you know, I think it's something to really think about. I think that he had a great time with FIBA at uh, boomed his confidence oh, and yeah. the Utah Jazz gave him an opportunity to be that player you know uh, mold the team around him and he really showed that he could continue that process I think there was even development this year you know he wasn't just like incredible right out the gate well he was in a way but uh, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, there was still further development with him mm -hmm. he was able to continue uh, from what he was doing with FIBA but you know progress further be a primary ball handler in certain situations be the go-to guy when we were needing him in clutch factors and uh you know something i love about lowry and you know what you were kind of mentioning too is i think this guy's ceiling has not been uh well it hasn't been sealed yet he hasn't gotten there yet oh, i yeah. think that next year he's gonna do better uh you think 28 i'm thinking maybe more 26 27 points per game which is incredible he's gonna be an all-star i believe again oh, yeah. i think that's what's next for him i think that he's gonna continue developing um a lot of people are thinking okay is this guy a number one option on a championship team or a number two i think that the way that he's developing right now 
you you pair him up with you know a guy who's incredible too a second option he mm -hmm. could be the number one option i agree i agree 100 percent. a lot of people wonder if he is a number one option i think he is without a doubt look 28 and 10 i'm putting it out there right now guys i'm telling you this kid is going to come out he's getting 28 and 10 next year i would i'd bet my my mortgage on it because <laughs> he did it in fiba and then he did it the last 50 games of an 82 game season that is not some small sample size like that is who he's gonna be you know i absolutely think that he is a number one option i think he's going to get better and better i think the thing he really needs to focus on working on is going to be those isolation plays yep. because he's not very good in isolation mm -hmm. um, he often has his uh, pocket picked you know the ball mm -hmm. stolen when he's trying yep. to drive and swerve and stuff like that but he is transcendent he is an all nba talent um he should be all nba this year over anthony davis in my opinion and that is not just because i'm a jazz fan that's just the facts um i don't even think anthony davis should be in the running for all nba because he missed so many freaking games but look mm -hmm. this dude is that kind of player he is the real deal and um we just need to find a second piece to get alongside of him